So how can we study, uh, or how is uh, emotional studies today uh, operationalized, uh, meaning how can, can we uh, put some words on the way that we express emotions? And, and one of the things that, that uh, researchers have done is to actually um, use what you call valence and arousal as two parameters in emotions that you can, uh, that you can adjust. So the valence is, is whether, uh, or the, you can sort of call it the value, so is it a positive or a negative emotion that you have? So uh, is it a stimulus that will, will elicit, for instance, an image that will elicit a, a happy feeling or a, or a more sad feeling? Um, <coughs> and also how um, arousing is this uh, feeling? So is it a strong negative uh, stimulus or is it just a mild negative stimulus? and uh, vice versa. So there are these two uh, axes of, of, um, of, of studying um, emotions and it seems that the amygdala can actually code these two axes um, in different ways. So even though that the amygdala has been shown to be involved in a lot of these negative uh, emotions uh, related to fear conditioning, it has also been shown that it can actually also code for more uh, positive feelings. <clears throat> then the prefrontal cortex also seems important for coding more of the complexity of, of the behaviors that are related to these emotional um, actions. So depending on, on other uh, factors, you will see that how, how these emotions can be uh, expressed in different ways through prefrontal cortex networks. Um, Another distinction that has been made previously but now is beginning to be less um, pronounced is this hard distinction between cognitive uh, processes and emotional processes. And it seems that, that because these networks are so interlinked with, with each other, so it's not just that you have a purely emotional uh, response, it can also be somewhat um, intermingled with cognitive processing. So it's not like this... Uh, rationality on one side and emotional on, on the other side, these can, can interlink. And you will see in the literature today that, uh, for instance, in economical decision making, uh, which is thought to be very rational and uh, be, um, be a sort of a cognitive process, that you will see that a lot of emotions also influence uh, cognitive dis or economical decision making and it's in a really flourishing field at the moment in, in neuroscience this coupling between for instance emotions and, and economical behavior. <coughs> so one of the uh, classical uh, ideas is to actually look again uh, of this um, fear conditioning uh, signal or uh, as, as not a fear, but rather a pleasure conditioning uh, signal. And what you can actually see is that, um, that in the amygdala you will have um, trials that actually, depending on what the outcome of uh, this uh, paradigm is, will, where you both have an air puff and uh, you have a reward, you'll see that there are parts of, of the amygdala that codes for, for both, uh, or code for both things. Uh, and there are also parts where it's more pronounced that it codes for the negative air puff signal, which is the more uh, unpleasant signal. And uh, in the trials where you receive a, a reward, uh, it's, uh, it's then a less, uh, firing less these negative amygdala cells, whereas the positive ones, they fire in the opposite ways. <coughs> a similar uh, thing you can actually see in the orbital frontal cortex. So this part of, of the frontal uh, lobe that's connected highly to the amygdala where you can see similar signs that some of the cells in the orbital frontal cortex, they code for the, um, for the positive signals whereas others code for the negative signals. So there is this coding of, of these uh, signals in both regions and it's on, on two, um, both positive and negative. So the... Um, <coughs> The, the orbital frontal cortex has been linked to um, to a lot of, of the studies where you uh, you you couple emotions with rewards and uh, 
the Danish neuroscientist Morten Kringelbach has actually done a lot of meta-analysis on the role of the orbitofrontal cortex in, um, in humans and also in, in other studies. And it seems that there is a, a difference in the way that uh, the orbitofrontal cortex codes these reward signals that you get. And these are actually coming from the amygdala. <coughs> so for instance, if you get a positive uh, or you, um, the value, so whether it's a positive or a negative uh, reward is coded by the medial parts of the orbitofrontal cortex here, whereas the lateral parts of the orbitofrontal cortex, so this is a view of the brain from below, you will actually see that those areas are then involved in modulating behavior in the lateral parts, whereas the value coding is in the medial parts. Um, so again, coupling uh, signaling in, in amygdala, um, emotional signals with uh, coding the value of these emotions uh, and giving rise to behavioral changes. <coughs> in different types of uh, neuropsychiatric disorders, you can also see that um, depending on which type of disease you have, you will either see um, hypo or hyper activity of networks involving uh, both the cingulate cortex, so in uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, you will see uh, that there is a, a reduction of activity in um, normal subjects compared with patients in these uh, blue regions, and uh, there is hyperactivity uh, in the red regions, so these also include, depending on the type of disorder that you have and, and the type of, uh, of, of uh, emotional stimuli that you process through them, you will see different networks in, that both includes the amygdala and the orbitofrontal cortex and the cingulate cortex that can respond differently to uh, emotional signals. Um.